An OT battle against the number one seeded Boston Celtics saw the Golden State Warriors secure a third straight W and get within a game of reaching 500. Over his last two games, Trace Jackson Davis, who we've said on this channel should be playing since the preseason, has finally earned his spot in stingy Stephen Douglas Kerr's rotation. Following a team meeting last week, whatever was said in it has worked to perfection, as the Bay Area's ball club has gone undefeated since. TJD's making all 30 GMs pay for passing on him in the first round of this year's draft, Jonathan Kaminga's clutch defense and vamped IQ displayed his progression, while Stephen Curry's clutch 33-piece was reminiscent of the 2022 Finals. Every detail on that and more is on its way, but according to YouTube's analytics, just 13.3% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for supporting this channel. The Warriors having a center with the lateral quickness of a shooting guard who can all of shot block, thrive in the dunker, set big body screens, and make high IQ plays while having a 36 inch vertical is something they haven't had probably since Kevon Looney's heyday, potentially even dating back to the early years of Andrew Bogut. Considering the facts that firstly, the Dubs wouldn't have won their last two games without TJD's presence, secondly, that Kerr's already adjusted the starting five by moving Wiggs to the bench, and thirdly, the Warriors this season with TJD haven't been mostly even getting DNPs for the entirety of it, rank third to the bottom in blocked shots per game. So DJ Steve should not only be playing Jackson Davis every game, but in my humble opinion, should highly consider moving Trace into the starting five because who knows, maybe that provides new life for Loondog as well, giving him some added motivation. Jackson Davis's lively activity around the basket to earn the Warriors extra possessions has been prevalent over the last two wins. Also game-changing in the Dubs' win over Boston was Baby T's wherewithal to operate in the pocket and help execute plays out of DHO action. Meanwhile, speaking on avoiding being dunked on after blocking JB in the clutch, here was Trace Jr. himself. Um, but I'm just glad I got a piece because I would have been on Sports Center. So, receiving the utmost praise from the man who's kept him on a shockingly short leash throughout this entire season, it seems Trace has finally earned Steve's trust. As Kerr would speak on Jackson Davis post game, saying, "Quote unquote, he's going to play. He's going to be in the lineup." Kerr would also go on to state regarding TJD, "Quote, Trace was the player of the game. Trace was the guy who shifted everything." second great game in a row, end quote. For more than five years, from December 1st, 2018, until December 17th of 2023, all-time great point guard Wardell Stephen Curry II made at least one three-pointer in a league record 268 consecutive games, a mark that more than doubled the length of any other player. However, an outing after Steph's all-time longest three-pointer in a game streak came to an end, Wardell responded by pouring in a typical six deep range bombs. Following Jalen Brown hitting the two small celly after scoring on Steph earlier in the game, Curry ultimately got the last laugh by sealing it with a dagger and night night celly. Kerr would state regarding Wardell post game, quote unquote, Steph brings joy to the world, he's incredible. Making distance daggers like his game sealer look seamless, on three-pointers specifically in the clutch, Steph shooting a mind-boggling 48.4%. Steph would play the entirety of the fourth quarter in overtime with five fouls, somehow still finding a way to over that span post 20 points on 7 for 11 shooting, including four threes and five dimes. Talk about showing up when it matters most. Speaking of which, to force overtime, ever-evolving third-year pro from the Republic of Congo and Jonathan Kaminga, with top lock then significantly on ball pressure Jason Tatum in an ISO, staying poised on multiple twisting jabs, and despite falling for a stop on a dive pump fake, make this an impossible shot with his reach and timing. Even more substantially was this high IQ reading of the passing lanes from Jonathan in OT, where he comes up big yet again by reading Horford's body language, scoping out his passing angle, then letting his hand eye coordination do the rest, a pick six that inevitably increased his minutes in the rotation. It speaks to how much traction Jonathan Kaminga's made in his development when he's directing traffic by telling two four-time champs which play they're running so he can attack a so-called mismatch in all-NBA player Jalen Marcellus Brown. You need to have Speaking of Boston right quick, the C's leading scorer on the night who's having an all-star caliber breakout year in the bald mamba Derek White racked up both three opening quarter blocks and triples 
first swatting Thompson and Curry from beyond the arc, then Wiggins in the paint. D. White would most notably, however, classily take his L postgame, stating regarding Steph, he's the greatest shooter of all time. Nothing really surprises you with Steph. With Golden State avalanching to overcome an 11-point deficit entering the fourth quarter, conversely, Jason Tatum suffered an ankle sprain for the Celtics, who failed to capitalize on some makeable opportunities around the hoop. Boston generally looked out of sync in a hostile environment on the road down the stretch. Boston, however, remains an undefeated 14-0 at home. For the Warriors, with Brandon Pajemski suffering a back strain, a Dubs team that was already missing the indefinitely suspended Draymond Green became that much more shorthanded. To be fair, Boston was missing third option Chris Dapps Porzingis. Another developing subplot for Golden State has been Andrew Wiggins finally showing up. Over three outings since having his starting spot taken away, my fellow Torontonians averaged 16 points, 5 rebounds, and 0 turnovers per night while shooting a bewildering near 57% from the field and 46% from deep. A. Wiggs is suddenly looking comfortable and in good condition again like his 2022 self, as two-way Wiggs could very well be on the comeback trail. CP3 had 12 dimes to zero turnovers, including a tough read through traffic which netted the game ceiling assist. On the other end, on the very first possession of a comeback beyond fourth quarter, Chris provided a tone-setting defensive stance on the eight inches taller than him Tatum. The man is pesky. Over his past four games, Vintage Clay has risen, as Thompson shooting an unbelievable 53.6% on 43 deep range attempts over that short span. Lethal deep range efficiency for the all-time sniper with four rings. Overall, stepping up with Draymond suspended indefinitely, TJD's been a game changer up front to say the ultimate least. In addition to everything else he provided, Given Trace also showed off solid passing chops in a game with a playoff-like feel to it against a top seed, he should never be receiving DNPs, even if and when Green returns. We all have a common desire to see an all-time talent in Stephen Curry make the most out of the final years of his NBA career. But without Steve playing young big men like Trace who can set Curry highly impactful on-ball screens and make smart, unselfish decisions in the lane, that's not going to happen. It's time for DJ Steve to loosen up both his headphones and TJD's leash, as that in turn will release the beast. But who was a bigger draft steal in your opinion, Pods or Trace? Best answer down below gets a shout out next vid and gets a chance to win free NBA merch by the end of the year. Today's shout out goes to FYI Sin, who says the most underrated player for the Celtics is Derek White and it's a no brainer. Pause to read the rest of that take. Appreciate every answer. Thank you so much for watching. DFlow signing off.